Back now to Croke Park, where Mick Dunn is once more the commentator. Followers haven't overlooked the significant fact that their teams come up from Division 2 just as it did in 1975 when they won the National League. But only two players remain from that triumph, and they're both in the defence. The number two, Phil Smith, who's right corner back then as now. And Joe Castles, a midfielder eight years ago, now wearing the number six, and he's the team captain. The only change from Meade's last divisional match brings Porrick Finnerty off screen to right half-back. Porrick was an absentee when Meade beat Ross Common to qualify for this semi-final. Tama has been in two All-Ireland Finals, but the county's never qualified for the final of the National League, despite being in five previous semi-finals. Two of these are lost to Mead in the mid-50s, so maybe in their case it'll be sixth time lucky today. The defence is unaltered, but among the changes in the attack, Mickey McDonald's back for the first time since November the 21st, when he scored two goals against Mayo. In the meantime, he's been playing soccer in the Irish League. However, the most radical change is the placing of Joe Murphy at right half forward, thus marking his first game away from the left corner back position in over two years. <laughs> Dublin referee Tony Jordan is in charge of this semi-final, and already he starts the game. Mead on the attack, playing into the... The goal on our right, this is Eamon Barry. Eamon, their leading scorer, gets the score in the first 15 seconds. You can see the way the goalkeepers are talked today. There's great need for the bottom of the pants of the tracksuit because it's a dreadful day in Crow Park. Magnificent yeah. feeling by Liam Hayes for me. The big man at midfield, Jerry McEntee beside him, also well over six feet. Jim McCarr here in some trouble. Raymond Barry for me coming up the number 10 is taking it over the sideline of the Armagh sideline kick number 7 Joey Donnelly Tony Jordan awarding free to me and Colm O'Rourke coming out to take it left footed kick he was about 25 metres out that was magnificently curled over the bar he was almost at the sideline, just a metre or two in, and about 25 metres out from the end line. <laughs> Joe Kernan coming right down under the kick out, gives it to Fran McMahon. Attention for Joe Kernan, he was doubtful earlier in the week, you can see how heavily the right tie is bandaged, and it looks as if Joe is going to be replaced. Joe was doubtful during the week and that's a big blow because he has been their brilliant centre half forward in this National League. Now, Jerry McEntee for me. Ben McMahon the number nine. Ben Tansy here. Paddy Moriarty right beside him. That's a free. Moriarty committing the free. Barry with the free and taking the point, the second one for him in this National League semi-final. Liam Hayes knocking it down, Brian Canavan takes it for Armagh, this is Des McCoy with a replacement for Joe Kernan. That was about to be cut off by Porrig Lyons, he couldn't get to it in time, the right corner forward! Magnificent score by Johnny Corbin! It was taken away from midfield by Des McCoy, who replaced Joe Kernan, came to Johnny Corbin, and he blasted it into the net. That's 16 minutes into the game, got a shot in the arm for Armagh, Des McCoy again. Johnny Corbin again. Sean Bryady, the goalkeeper in there. 
Warwick lines the corner back committing the foul and having his name taken and Mickey McDonald to take the free and now they're level so Mickey McDonald is celebrating his return by getting that point for Armagh one goal and a point to Mead four points now Colum Coyle for Mead here Colum O'Rourke inside Jim McCarr to the number three it's gone over for a 45 went off Jim McCarr's fingers obviously so Eamon Barry to take it wind is behind him remember with Mead leading by just one point now can Eamon stretch it here from this 45 meter shot to drop low Frank O'Sullivan Increasing their lead to two points. The first in the game for Frank O'Sullivan this one. And McMahon knocking that down. Gone way into the crowd on that Cusick stand. couldn't get that into his fingers M Matty McCabe here pull down and the free will be just outside the 20 meter line the referee is about to take the name of Dennis Stephen for pulling down Matty McCabe then so that's the fourth player that's been booked Eamon Barry with the free and Eamon taking the point that's the third point for Eamon. Four points to half time. Lead with a three point lead. Could that be sufficient going against the strong wind in the second half? Here to come again from Liam Hayes. Delivery. Joe Murphy here. Des McCoy. Des who's not 19 until, until June robbed by Colm O'Rourke Des McCoy again now the young teenager well kept in by the number 15 for Armagh Mickey McDonald Johnny Corbin here and Corrig Lyons the corner backs and the corner forwards have switched positions down there now Johnny Corbin it was well cut off by Mick Lyons just got to it in time before Brian McGowan but Armagh coming again and Brian Canavan this is Des McCoy to Fran McMahon the shot from McMahon Mickey McDonald and it's got in oh that was a beautiful first timer It was Fran McMahon who dropped it in just to the corner of the small parallelogram and Mickey McDonald pulled on it first time into the corner off the upright. Just a minute and a half over the 30 minutes, the worst stoppage is for injury stuff. Jim McCarr getting that away. Dennis Stevenson very unceremoniously done. This is Colin O'Rourke. Losing it. Jim McCarr getting it away. Desi McCoy, and that's the end of the first half. And they're level for the second time. They go into their dressing room. Level. Arma having come back with two smashing goals. One of them by Mickey McDonald here. Back for the first time since November. So Tony Jordan starting the second half. Now what difference will the win make to Armagh? Remember they're playing with it this time. Armagh trying to set up. Mead. Ball gone over the line. Frank O'Sullivan. The number four for Armagh. Kieran McNally. Two 
Boom McNally's shot very badly taken. Most of the mid players have changed to dry jerseys for the second half. The difference is they don't have the three yellow stripes across the chest. Some of them don't retain the same jerseys from the first half. To forward Brian McGowan to Noel Marley. Phil Smith cutting it off for me. And Phil getting away. Back to Noel Marley. Sean Devlin slipping. Brian McGowan, the full forward in the opening seconds of the second half. The rain buckling down now during the second half. It has eased a little before half time. But very unpleasant there. That's well taken by Sean Devlin. He switched over right half forward now. Joe Murphy has gone to the left. And Sean Devlin with his shot. Sean Devlin with a magnificent point. That was excellently done. for me Paddy Moriarty gets a hand to it Brian Canavan 14 Colin Morrow the free is to Armagh but now one it is two the wind is behind them remember Mick Lyons the full back with the clearance Colin Morrow out under it he's moved to centre half forward this is Noel Marley Mick Lyons Johnny Corbin gets it the shot from Johnny it's blocked by Colin Coyle and then pouring Lyons out to Colin Coyle but that was near disaster for Meade in the defence Paddy Moriarty here Joe Castle the 21 is Des McCoy Jerry McEntee Ben Tanzi beaten away from him Mick Downs for me into Jerry McEntee leaves it behind him gets it to Ben Tanzi but can Ben get in Ben Tanzi right into the hands of Jim McCair it is and he gets it away the long clearance from Jim Fran McMahon here Jerry McEntee alongside him that's Mick Lyons the fullback look how Croke Park is cut up in this second semi-final very difficult underfoot for the players Jerry McEntee down, gets it to Colm O'Rourke Colm O'Rourke nice turn and just drops it into the back of the net Colm O'Rourke turned nicely McDowns was the one who laid it on to Colm O'Rourke, Colm turned nicely on a fairly firm spot of the pitch and dropped it in over the goalkeeper's head minutes into the second half and me take the lead again but Arma coming back quickly Noel Marley Des McCoy this is Johnny Corbin Colin Coyle getting it away Sean Devlin now inside to Des McCoy Brian McGowan just blocked Brian McMahon shot now the kick out just going beyond midfield Johnny Corbin pushed in the back and referee giving the free just inside the 45 meter line 42 or 43 metres out he is the ball rolling away then that shows the strength of the wind been no weakening at all in the gale force wind here in Cove Park and the rain is coming down just as steadily Johnny Corbin now with a shot beautiful point 
it is, they're level again, third time in this semi-final. Johnny Corman, the number 13, gets the point from the three. Certainly it's a rousing contest in this second half, considering the awful conditions. You can just see the ground there, the way it is cut up. The underfoot conditions have been most unsuitable for football, but fair juice to the players. They've put in a grand tussle here between them. Now Mickey McDonald chasing that, but can't get there. Into the last quarter now, you can see a lot of work for groundsman Con O'Leary next week. The mud there in that goal mouth. That's the mead goal mouth at the moment. Sean Briley to kick out. Indeed, right up the centre of the pitch. This has been badly cut up. Noel Marley, Sean Bryady having to come out very quickly. Jerry McEntee get or Jerry McEntee getting it away. This is Eamon Barry. That'll break to Sean Devlin. That's the fullback Jim McCarr way down there. Johnny Corbin the shot from Johnny Corbin that's the lead for Armagh they're in front again but Johnny Corbin they're outstanding forward in this current National League putting them back in front just by the one point Frank O'Sullivan knocked away from it by Kieran McNally Fran McMahon is down there Joe Castles dropping it Des McCoy Joe Cassis got his fingers to it Brian McGeown getting armour on the attack Johnny Corbin to Brian McGeown Johnny Corbin has been fouled after he got rid of the ball and Brian McGeown on the ground as well and the referee taking the name of Mick Lyons Award with linesman David Foley. Colin Coyle had a look at his number. And now having a word with Porig Lines. In fact, Porig Lines was the first player to be booked in this game. Way back in the 17th minute of the first half. So very, very lucky he is indeed minutes now into the second half Johnny Corbin with the three about 40 metres out to the right of the post you can see how Johnny's going to come round at the angle the left footed shot a beautiful point he had judged it so nicely Sean Bryady kicking out got a good one call Mick Lyons goes there alert for me to his captain Joe Castles. Joe shot half blocked by Frank McMahon. This is Joe Murphy. Shot blocked. Ryan Canavan. And Mick Lyons for me. Really the players are playing under most difficult conditions in this semi-final. And as, the, as Down and Kildare were in the first one. The most unpleasant day for football. Joe Murphy setting up an attack. Colin Coyle is there for me. His clearance isn't a good one. the fullback he's way beyond midfield the rain just bucketing down now you can see it against the background of the Cusick stand then Bill Smith Jerry McEntee Brian Canavan here for Armagh shot or he's attempted pass half blocked he recovered very quickly himself Mickey McDonald now, nice piece of handwork, basketball play, but it died in that mud, and Joe Castles gets it away. Fran McMahon to Brian McGeown, recovered from that earlier injury. This is Noel Marley. 
very close to the sideline a nice pass to Joe Murphy shot is blocked Eamon Barry for me this is really exciting football now Paddy Moriarty and Mick Down Paddy Moriarty what a splendid centre half back he is Joey Donnelly for Armagh of the post but the referee has spotted a foul inside the referee has spotted a foul the three will be from 13 meters just there says Tony Jordan Mickey McDonald to take it Mickey McDonald taking them from the left hand side Johnny Corbin from the right hand side and both of them increasing the Arma total. Six minutes on over. Column coil here. Now can we work something out of this? Liam Hayes inside to McDown. Inside him is Eamon Barry. McDowns, the shot is just fingers to it. This is Karen Moreau, knocked away from him. 13 is Matty McCabe. Kieran McNally, very close to that end line he is. Colin Moreau, the 14, it's a free out. Hugo Peden, he has replaced the full forward Brian McGowan in the Armagh defence or Armagh attack so Hugo penalised for the descent the ball advanced the 10 or 11 metres Jim McCurr so sound at full back and the captain he gets the pat there from Fran McMahon, just two minutes left. So 2-7 to 1-7. Arma have the goal of the lead. And unless Mead can do something very sensational in these last seconds, it's an, an all-Ulster final for the second time. And for the first time, a final between two teams from the six counties. Kieran McNally getting it away. Sean Devlin for Arma. Now Johnny Corbin. That's Des McCoy. And the shot from Des, it's gone wide. But at this stage of the semi-final, putting it out there is almost as good as a point. Sean Bryady now with the kick out. Just Noel Marley for Arma. Hugo Peden here. Fran McMahon now for Armagh, Fran McMahon, that certainly is the National League final for Armagh, Fran McMahon putting the stamp of victory on it, 2-8 to 1-7, to Armagh just seconds away now from the National League final for the first time. Gone over the sixth, or gone over the 30 minutes of the second half now. Remember, Arma never in a National League final until this moment. Jerry McEntee here, but it's too late for Mead now. The wind, of course, having a big influence in this game. Arma having it in the second half and coming again. And the elegance of this man, Johnny Corbin, 
What a beautiful shot, but cut off by the goalkeeper, Sean Briarty. With Johnny Corbin playing with great skill and elegance, even on a day as atrocious as this. Joe Castle's here now for me. Final is over, Armagh for the very first time are in the National League final and there they'll meet their next door neighbours down this day fortnight here in Crow Park and it's the second time for two Ulster teams to be in the final. One of the goal scorers here, Mickey McDonald. Well, as Mick said, what a spirited performance they both gave us in spite of the atrocious weather. In Thailand, Limerick qualified to meet Kilkenny in the National Hurling League final with a seven-point win over Wexford. Despite playing with the wind in the first half, Limerick led by just one point at the break, five to four. But two goals by Matt Ray kept them comfortably in front in the second half. Tony Dorn gave Wexford uh, some contact for the goal. Thanks, Eamon. Starting with the World Professional Snooker Championships being played in Sheffield, Dennis Taylor has just started his second round match against Steve Davis. And the latest news from there is it's all square at two frames apiece. Meanwhile, defending champion Alex Higgins, he leads Willie Thorne 9-7. So Higgins needs four of tonight's final nine frames to reach the quarterfinals. Cycling next, Ulster's David Gardner is still Ireland's top man in the Sealink International race. But after today's stage in Birmingham, Gardner slipped back to 19th place overall. The Dutchman Albert Wakema is still the overall leader of the race, which ends tomorrow, by the way, in Sheffield. Some motorcycling news. Tony Rutter and Dennis Ireland have both confirmed their entries for next month's Dacia Northwest 200. Last year, Englishman Rutter won the 350cc race, setting up a new lap record of over 117 miles an hour in the process. New Zealander Ireland has yet to win it at the Northwest, but has twice been the highest placed overseas rider. On the rugby, Ulster fullback Roy Palmer, who's back after injury, could be the ace in a collegians team, hoping to end a Ravenhill hoodoo, and that's against the city of Derry in the AIB Senior Cup final. It will be collegians' fourth senior decider in four years, which gives the old boys a slight edge, but Derry, with Ulster players Mark McFeely and Ian Crow in the pack, could spring a surprise or two in that final. It's cup final time as well in men's hockey with uh, Belfast YMCA. They'll be attempting to keep the Irish Cup in Ulster hands for the fourth year in a row when they meet Dublin side Avoca tomorrow in Dublin. And here at home, Annadale can clinch the Section 2 title. They need only a draw in their home game against Rafaud to become champion, champions. A historic local derby to beat all derbies takes place in Dublin on Sunday when all conquering Ulster Gaelic football teams, Armagh and Darn, meet in the National League final, and that's at Croke Park. The experts say Armagh are the favourites, but others have warned, don't ride off this young Darn side. By the way, it's the first time two teams from the six counties have met in a National League decider. Leslie Dawes has been to both camps this week. Well, as one uh, sporting scribe wrote this week, if there's 